Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Here on the channel, we cover all sorts of design and code related content. So I wanted to take a look at animate.css, a cross browser library of CSS animations. So we're going to create a little mini series over this, probably a two part series where we're going to cover everything about this library that I can possibly think of. So this video is not only the overview, but we're going to get this working in some actual code at the end. Then in the next video, we'll pick up where we left off from this one and start using some jQuery. Before we begin, if you guys want to see more code related content like this on the channel, make sure you give this video a thumbs up or just let me know down in the comments below. So with all that said, let's go ahead and dive into animate.css. So basically what animate.css is, is a bunch of pre-made classes that you can choose from to add some motion to your website. So here on the website, we have a drop down menu and we can look at all kinds of things that they have in this library. So let's just click bounce in and it'll apply this to this element here and show us an example of this. So this is a great way to see visually what all of these classes do. So there's fade in and you can go through and check out all these. I'll display all these in a nice list here for you in just a minute so you can read through them and see what they all are. So to get to this, all you have to do is just Google animate.css. I will also link this down in the description of this video, as well as the GitHub page, which we will be referencing throughout the video. So how we get started is we need to link to the library. On GitHub, they provide you with two options for a link for the CDN. Here's one of the options they provide for you. And then they also allow you to download the file on that website we just looked at. And then here you can link to it using animate.css. We'll do all this later, so no worries. I just wanted to show you your options here. So once we've linked to the library, we have to implement the animation to an element. So here we have an H1 element and it's named example. And then we have a class. So the first thing we need to do is tell the library that this is going to be an animated element. We do that by giving it a class of animated. Then once we do that, we have the option to make this looped or infinite. And we can do that by simply specifying infinite. If you don't want this to be infinite, you can leave that blank. Then lastly, we need to apply the effect. And here we're going to use bounce. So this will bounce on the load of the document. So when we load up our page, this element right here will start to bounce infinitely on our screen. So this is the basics of the syntax. You can customize this further and we'll get into that in just a moment. So here is a full list of all the classes and these are the effects. They do update this every now and then and add a few more. I think heartbeat down here was just added recently. So you have a bunch of them. There's some that are grouped together such as the fade ins. We have fade in, fade down, fade down big, fade in left. And then we have things like zoom, slide, there's all kinds of them. Again, on that website I showed you, you guys can test all of them out by selecting them in the dropdown. Let's start to get into some other classes they provide for you. So here we have the delay class. So you can specify two, three, four, or five seconds by just writing this out inside of our class. So if we look at the syntax for that, we have specified that this is an animated div. We have bounce as our effect. Then we want this to be delayed by two seconds. So we say delay dash two seconds. Next up, we can also change the speed. They have four classes for that. We have slow, slower, fast, and faster. And here are all the appropriate times for those. If we look at that syntax, it's exactly the same thing. We have animated specified, our effect, and then we're using slow to tell it we want it to go two seconds long. So let's get into the further customization that we can do. So if we take a look at our CSS now, so this would be whatever you're applying the element to, you can specify the duration, the delay, and the iteration count. So the first thing, animation duration is simply the time it takes the animation to complete. So if we put that at 50 seconds, it will take 50 seconds for that animation to complete. The delay is just telling us how long we want the delay before the animation actually begins. And then the iteration count, you can specify how many times you want it to repeat. If you want to do infinite, you can specify that here, or you can do it in the syntax like we did before, just writing it in as a class because they do provide a class called infinite. And so now we are ready to get coding. So I'm going to go ahead and launch brackets, but you can launch your favorite text editor and let's actually start to implement this into some code and see how it actually functions. 
So back in the browser, I'm just gonna click download animate.css and then I'm going to save this. So I just have a folder called code and then I have the animate.css in here. So here in brackets, I have an index file and then a main.css file. And that is producing this result over here. We just have a simple button called animate and this is what we're going to be animating. So I will provide exactly what I have right here in the description in the project files. So if you wanna start and follow through with me, just go ahead and download that and start now. So what I'm gonna do first is link to the file we just downloaded, which is the animate.css. So I'm just going to link to that. So link rel, and then I'm gonna specify this as a style sheet, and then href, and then animate.css. So from here, we can look in the body. I have plenty of spacing here so you can easily see. I just have a wrapper and that's kind of aligning this element here. And then I have a, a tag, which is going to be my button, it's a link. And then it's got a class of button on that and that's just for the styling of the button itself. So here in the class, the first thing we need to do is add that class called animated. So now our library knows that we're gonna be animating this. And I'm just going to apply shake for now and you can see it shakes once, and that's what will happen every time you load up the page. So if we refresh, it will just shake, and then it's done. So we can view it. I'm gonna go ahead and add that infinite class. And now it just shakes infinitely. One thing to note, if you add another class, so we go bounce, it only looks at the first class that you added. So bounce will not be applied, but if we remove shake, it will then begin to bounce. All right, so now we've confirmed that that's working. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the class of infinite. So it will stop shaking. And we're gonna play around with the duration, the delay, and the iteration count. So let's head over to the main.css. And here I have my a tag with a class of button. And here I have all of my styling to make it look how it is. So I'm just going to go down and let's add a comment in here. And I'm just gonna call this animation. So down here, we can begin to adjust the animation properties. So the first thing we're gonna target is the animation duration. Let's set this to five seconds, so 5S. We can save that and then refresh the page. And it will start to animate now very slowly because it has to animate over five seconds. We can do the same thing if we speed this up, we can go with 0 0.5, which is half a second. Now it's gonna shake really fast. So let's put it to three seconds. And next we're gonna do animation delay. Let's add a delay of three seconds as well. So when we refresh the page, it takes three seconds and then it will start to animate over the course of three seconds. So the animation time is six seconds from the start of the delay to the end of the duration. Then we can also set the animation iteration count. Here we can say how many times we want this to loop. So if I say one and refresh, the delay is three seconds and then it starts to animate over three seconds and then it stops. Let's quickly remove the delay and set the iteration to You'll notice that it immediately starts and it's going to do this animation 10 times and it's gonna take 30 seconds to complete it because it's three seconds long. And now it's stopped. So that's our three controls that we have over this. We've successfully linked this library in our code. We have it functioning on a button and you can begin to apply this to multiple elements and get something that looks pretty cool. So in the next video, we're going to look at a different way to apply these classes using jQuery because right now the only controls we have over this is when we refresh the page, the animation either starts or it has a delay, which is not very useful. We want certain things to animate when we hover on them or when we click on them. So we'll take a look at how to implement that in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more UI design and code related content. Make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. You can follow me on all my social media at Kaylor Edwards. That's for my Dribbble, Instagram, Twitter, and Behance. As always, have a great day, 
and I'll see you guys in the next one.